guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a Harry Potter acceptance letter traveler's notebook cover. If you don't know what a traveler's notebook is, it has an elastic spine so that you can insert your own notebooks, maybe like a moleskin cachet, or you can get some straight from the traveler's company or Midori company as they used to be called. Um, or you can even make your own, just little notebooks that you can switch in and out and customize yourself. So the first thing that we're gonna get started on is the wax seal. And we're gonna make it out of polymer clay. I used to play clay because it's the softest and most high quality. I wouldn't do um, Sculpty 3. So with souffle clay, I just put it around a flat metal button and it must be metal so that it doesn't melt in the oven because you're gonna cook this. Then I put the seal on it and push it in really good so that you can see the whole impression of it. And then once it's on, it's on real good. It's not as easy as pulling off of a wax. So, um, so you don't mess up the look of it. Just take a fork, stick it in the shank, and pull it off that way. And then stick it in the oven to bake. Usually it's 275, but look at your packet because different brands may vary in the temperature and time. So then we take the notebook, and whichever notebook you want to use, you want to measure the width and height. Um, I use a standard Midori size. But you could use, you know, like a moleskin cachet. You can make your own notebooks. You could just find some notebooks at the store that you like to use. Um, but I like narrow skinny ones so you could fit multiple notebooks into one thing. And there's plenty of these online. Just look for traveler's notebook inserts. Choose your size and get your notebooks first. Then measure the height of it. And then when you're making your pattern or drawing out where you want to cut, do the height of it plus a little bit, like an eighth of an inch, just a little bit so that it's, it's um, almost the same size as your notebook, but just a little bit more. So an eighth of an inch over your height. Then for the width, your width will depend on how many notebooks you want to be able to put in it. Because this one wraps around, it's really flexible in that it's not going to be shortened or hang over because it's hanging over anyway. It wraps all the way around. So... Um, so you can just cut it really big and then kind of wrap it around and see where it hangs and where you want that envelope to go. But basically, you're going to do the width times two because you got the front and the back times three because you've got the flap in the front and then, and then the width of the spine. So however many notebooks you want to put in there, the thickness of that. So I would do times three and a half or maybe times four at least. Err on the wide side so that you can um, just cut off excess later instead of be short. It's better to have too much than not enough because you can always cut off more later. I almost forgot to tell you what kind of material I'm using. I really like to use leather, but I didn't want to go to the leather store, and it was uh, New Year's Eve when I did this, so it wouldn't even be open. But a white leather would be ideal. I didn't have that available, so I got some vinyl, and it was really thin. It's like the leather look vinyl. So I decided to glue it together, but I'll tell you what, I did the spray glue and it was just such a mess. In the future, I think I would have done maybe like a Fabri-Tac and just put it on with a paintbrush because the spray glue just, it, I just ended up having sticky fingers. It was just a mess and there was parts that didn't really glue all the way too. It just didn't glue as well as Fabri-Tac. So I have it a little thicker because it's two together and the inside looks a lot nicer than that back of the vinyl fabric that has kind of the guidelines. I didn't like that look being on the inside of my cover either. So that's another reason why I doubled it up. But now I, I measured how far it wraps around as you can see and we are just making the envelope part of it, the envelope tip, the closure. Um, I measure where the middle is and then cut off the ends. And then when I go around the middle part I kind of round it out so it's not just a little pointy, it makes it a little bit neater looking. So just a little bit rounded. And that way when you wrap it around your notebook, then it's going to look sort of like an envelope. That's all the, the spray glue on there. Okay, so you wrap it around. Yep, still getting off spray glue. There we go. Wrap it around and it looks a little bit like an envelope. So now we're going to get started putting the elastics on. We need holes to put the elastics through, and these are the elastics that hold your notebook in. 
Um, I just did three holes on this one to keep it kind of thin. Um, I think the original Midori only has one and then you can do some supplemental thing, but I like to have all the elastics right in there. My other one has five and so you could put as many as you want. But start with your first hole, it needs to be about the width of your notebook and then about an eighth of an inch or the thickness of your notebook away from it. So if they're really thick, obviously do them further apart, but mine are pretty thin. So I'm punching it with a leather punch, but you could use a sharp needle or some kind of pokey tool and all just something pokey to poke your hole through it. So in guiding you how to sew this through, I'm going to say the top three are one, two, three, and the bottom three holes are four, five, six. Get a big needle, or you can use um, a wire that you just have put the thing through and use the two ends of the wire to poke through. But your big needle to stick the elastic through, put it out number one and back in number two. So then you've just got a little wrap around the edge. Then bring it down to the bottom and poke it in. or out, sorry. So out number one, I'm numbering there. And in number two. And then out number five. And in number six. And you want it slightly taut, but not super taut, enough that it kind of bends the leather just a little bit, or the vinyl, as you will. Then bring it back up and stick it out number three. And back in number two, which you already have a string through. So there are two strings going through the middle. And then back out number five, two strings going through the middle, back in number four. That's the first time you stick something through four. And I will put that sequence in the comments, not the comments, in the description of the video below so that it makes more sense. Um, so, you can, so you don't have to watch that part over and over. I'll just write the directions for that part below. So you have two strings going through the middle, one on the right side, and one that needs to be tied together on the left side. Make sure that the tautness is right and then pull tight but not too tight because as you can see here I accidentally ripped it. I had to, I tried to undo it but my knot was so tight it couldn't undo it. So I just ended up tying that little tail over and over around the edge just to make sure it didn't come undone. So once you have the elastics all tied and ready to go, then you can put your inserts in. And I, like I said before, use the Midori standard size. You can use whatever size you want. Maybe you are using moleskin cachets. I like to use something thin so that I can have multiple notebooks for different things, like my monthly planner in one, and then my weekly planner in another. And as you can see too, I have some little pocket things that I put around them. Um, I have this plastic one that has a zipper tie thing where I put my pens in and my credit cards and stuff. And I just got those on Amazon. And then the notebooks you can make yourself. You can get printable ones that you fold or you can buy them already done. The Midori company sells some beautiful ones. They're a bit pricey or you can get them on Etsy or Amazon. I like all the options they have on Etsy. There's so many different things people have designed for them. So to get the glue part off, I used some um, coconut oil, but you could use olive oil, any oil, after it dries, and then you just kind of rub it off. It comes off so well. This would not work with leather because you don't want to put oil on leather. But this is vinyl, so that's how I got it off. You could rub it off by just rubbing with your finger. So I'm going to show you a little mistake I made. My other Midori notebook that I made out of leather had a strap, like an, an elastic strap that went all the way around and then hooked around the button. This one, I didn't want the elastic to be covering up the address that you have on the other side. So I made the, I tied the button, I sewed the button to the bottom and then put the elastic on the flap of the envelope 
and then wrapped it around, just like you see on those sort of um, manila envelopes with a button closure. But it just wasn't meeting the wax seal button very well, and it didn't look like the seal had sealed the envelope. It really just looked pretty terrible. So I decided to go with the elastic that wraps around just like I have on my other one. But instead of using the gold, I went with a clear elastic, like the kind that you make little bracelets out of and stuff like that. I only had a skinny one. I would go with the thickest one that you can find, but get a clear stretchy cord. And at first I was going to double it up, but it looked really messy. So I didn't double it up. It's just one skinny cord. So when you thread this cord through, you're going to have the ends of it sticking through the front of the envelope flap and the um, loop part goes through the back of the envelope flap. And those ends, the two ends that you have going through the front, that's what you're going to tie around your wax seal button. And here's where you can see that my wax seal button was off. You want it to be parallel so that the seal faces forward but you know wax seals do end up getting put on crooked a lot of times so I didn't think it was too bad to change I could redo the button but I didn't think it was too bad so I left it but you tie the button on and once the button is tied on really good then you can just wrap it around and wrap that loop around the button and it closes your little purse looking notebook wallet Midori notebook so I tied it all the way around the edge of it right there, as you can see, and I'm also showing how the button needs to be parallel to the edge. So the last step is to get the image on. You can freehand it, um, and I somehow didn't record this doing it on the actual thing, so I'm recording this later, doing it on a scrap piece. I hit record, but it didn't save for some reason. But because I have vinyl, I can image transfer with a what is it called, a laser jet printer. If you have a laser jet printer, print the image. I have a copy of the image. I'll put it in my Google Docs and you can get it yourself already turned backwards. So you print the image backwards. You put some 100% acetone on there and don't pull it on. You just want it enough so that the vinyl feels kind of sticky because acetone kind of melts vinyl. You want it to feel kind of sticky and then put on the laser printed image and then get your cotton ball or whatever you're using and just rub it on the paper and it will image transfer it over. It doesn't look perfect, but if you did a ton of acetone on the bottom, it would kind of leak. And I would actually um, print it on the lowest quality too so it's not got a ton of ink on it because you don't want it to start spreading. So obviously that doesn't look super perfect. I'm just using it as a guide to write it on. And you want to use alcohol ink because alcohol ink really sticks to the vinyl and is permanent. Well, mostly permanent. So this pen I have is just like a Sharpie. It's an alcohol ink pen. And it's the um, finest point that I had. So it's the one that I used. And you just trace over it. Um, I wish I would have had a very super fine point Sharpie, but I didn't. And I really didn't want to go to the store again. So on the wax seal part, I ended up using my what is that pen called? My Micron pen. You can see how good that looks with the Sharpie, right? The alcohol ink. It's so dark and it really sticks on there really good. And then on the seal, it's very, very detailed and small. So I use my Micron pen because it has a tiny, tiny tip. But the problem is, is that Micron pen is water soluble. That one's my brown one, not the one that I used. I used a double zero five. And so that's the one I used, a black double zero five, and it will rub off. See, that one's still a little wet, so it started to rub off. But really, alcohol ink doesn't rub off, and that Micron totally does rub off. But when I sealed it with, oh, you want to heat seal it a bit. And I thought that maybe the Micron pen would heat seal and kind of burn into it, but it didn't. But I took my my heat gun and I heat sealed it on there before I went and sealed it with another thing. So I did get a recording of me heat sealing it a little bit, but you know, um, if I were to do this over again, I really would have tried to find leather instead of doing this on vinyl. And if I was using leather, I would have done 
um, what is it called, wood burning, like a pyrography. I have really nice pyrography pens, so that's probably what I would have done there. Um, and I would have transferred it with maybe some kind of carbon paper. And you can do that with the vinyl too. You can get um, carbon paper, put it on, get your thing printed out, and then just trace over top and kind of push down so that the carbon paper, just like those um, papers that you fill out at the doctor, and it'll do this really light layer of what you want. Or you can just freehand it if you feel comfortable freehanding. Freehand it with pencil first, maybe just to get it right, and then go back with your permanent marker. So now we need to really seal it with something that's nice and flexible. I got the Liquitex matte varnish because I didn't want it to be really shiny. It's a letter, you know, it's paper. So you don't want it to be shiny. It looks shiny here just because it's wet. But Liquitex matte varnish, you could use a, any sort of acrylic matte varnish or whatever. And I put it over the whole thing so that it would have the same texture everywhere. And I did long horizontal strokes. And right here, you can see I just did the front, but I unfolded it and I put it everywhere. See, there we unfold it so that it would have the same texture everywhere. And I went ahead and did multiple layers. Now, the part that I did the water-soluble marker on top where the seal is, I, I tried to cover that really quick so I wouldn't smear the ink. And it did smear a tiny bit, but I did a really thin first layer. And then after that, because it had a layer, I was able to do lots of other layers on top. I did like four or five layers on the marker parts so that it was really sealed in. So now it's done. I did wait a full day before really handling it after putting on the, the seal. But it's really fun to have one of these traveler's notebooks because you can just change out your inserts all the time. You can change your mind and just stick in a new insert. They're skinny. And I changed my mind a lot so I could maybe use a printed one for one month or whatever. And the yearly one, you can't change out a lot unless you just want to. You can scrap whatever you have. But I do all my bullet journaling in my traveler's journal. I do some art journaling in there too. And I can change my mind all the time because you can swap them out. And I just love that about it. You could bring all of your notebooks with you or just a few. You could really stuff them in there or not. And that's what I love about it. It's just great. So what would be really fun if you do your bullet journal inside your traveler's notebook or your, or your art journaling is to make it Harry Potter themed. I totally want to do this. If you search on Pinterest, Harry Potter themed bullet journal, there are so many ideas. It's a whole thing. It's a whole huge thing. There's a whole culture of people making Harry Potter travelers notebooks and bullet journals. So, and art journals too and stuff like that. So, so many fun ideas. Um, check that out on Pinterest. Or if you don't want to spend all the time doing all that artwork, you just want to journal without having the stress of feeling like you have the pressure to do the artwork. You can just search for Harry Potter Traveler's Journal inserts on Etsy. And there are maybe not quite as many other ideas, but there are a few ideas here. Um, let me try to click on a few. I don't know what we have here. Um, let's see. Here's this one. Wizard Gratitude Spread. That one looks pretty fun. Or here's a, a monthly, I think it's a year at a glance spread um, that you can download and put into your bullet journal. If you have a regular bullet journal, you could glue it in. But the, the fun of making your own inserts is that you can put print out whatever you want in it in the right size. Um, here's another one that has different refills. I don't know if this is, this is already printed, I think, for you, and they can send it to you. So you don't have to worry about doing the print printing here, I believe. I haven't read all the things about it, but it looks like with the price that it is not just a printable, but they'll send you the notebook. Um, another idea, instead of doing printables, is just getting tape or stickers. They have Harry Potter sticker sets. Look, Harry Potter Midori, or I'm sorry, Harry Potter washi tape. Uh, I love this Patronus one. Isn't that cute? Um, you can get sets of them. Oh, look at this one. I really like this one. Officially licensed Harry Potter House Crest Quidditch and Patronus Washi Tape. I love the one on the bottom that um, has the crests and the Hufflepuff. Oh, I just love it. That's so fun. Another thing is the Harry P Hermione's 
Magical Bullet Journal group on Facebook. And it's a whole group of people who do their um, their bullet journal in Harry Potter themed. It's a closed group. So you do need to apply for it. But it's basically just saying, hey, are you going to spam us? And you say, no, I'm cool. I like Harry Potter. And then they'll let you join the group. There's like 2.5 thousand members on here and they have a lot of cool ideas and you can share your ideas with us too so come join us over on Hermione's Magical Bullet Journal. I hope you like this tutorial. I hope you learned something new and learned from my mistakes. If you have some ideas on how to do something like this better just leave your ideas in the comments. It's always great to have a group of people hive mind to get some better ideas on how to do something even better than the video that you're watching. That's what I always like to do. Um, if you love magical stuff, Harry Potter stuff, witchy stuff, um, fantasy stuff, and crafting, then go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed the tutorial. It would really help me out. Happy magical crafting and happy new year. Bye.